Good morning, brethren. It's 7.37 a.m. this time here uh, where I'm at. And i uh, got a rather quick video to make here. Um, thank you to my beloved brother, Alexander Hartley. Today is the 6th. And um, he read the Proverbs, uh, proverb, uh, the 6th proverb, excuse me, which I also read, but I, I listened to it myself from him. And listening to my b beloved brother, Alexander Hartley, reading the sixth proverb, Lord showed me something. <coughs> Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures, to the sixth proverb. Um, this is a, another impromptu video I'm going to be sharing with you several resources because I'm going to be, once again, addressing the Jesuits. Uh, I have to read something off of my fancy schmancy cell phone, something that a dear brother of mine gave me a wonderful package with all kinds of stuff uh, on the Jesuits. Um, I told you I was going to be put to good use, but I'm going to read something off of that. I'm also going to quote to you something from the art of war. Um, there is a dear man out there who, um, who unfortunately, because we do not agree on who God is, I, I had to part company with him. I have no ill will feelings toward this man, but um, this uh, gentleman believes in the Trinity and I do not. And unfortunately, um, if we cannot, if we cannot agree on who God is, there is not much that we can do. Love you. I'm still praying for you, but, um, yeah, but he suggested, and I have come to agree with that. They like to trace the art of war to Sun Tzu, uh, back in the, what, 700s or 300 BC era, but this, uh, um, this gentleman, and I mean that sincerely, uh, suggested to me that this might be, in fact, written by the Jesuits. I've come to agree with that. But I'm going to read to you something out of the uh, Art of War by Sun Tzu, so-called, supposedly. I'm also going to share another thing with you from the Black Pope. Again, get this book, okay? I do believe that I have this as a PDF on my channel now, so yeah, yeah. And also I'm going to share with you a quote from a thing here um, from World's Last Chance, a quote from this about the Jesuit order, okay? So, and uh, you can go to, <coughs> uh, excuse me, uh, worldslastchance.com to find this, okay? But um, bear with me. Proverbs chapter 6, verses 12 on to verse 15. Go there, of course. You are expected to go there when we read the scriptures together. <laughs> a naughty person, a wicked man, walketh with a froward mouth. <laughs> He winketh with his eyes, he speaketh with his feet, he teacheth with his fingers. He winketh with his eyes. Oh, he's so sweet, isn't he? He's so endearing, so calm, so cool, so collected. He speaketh with his feet, ye shall know them by their fruits. Where are they going? With whom make they allegiance? Huh? They, they pretend to be of us, but then once they are known for who they are, they go to whom their true brethren are, fellow Jesuits and coadjutors. Well, like it says, he speaketh with his feet. He speaketh with his feet. Yeah. Where did they uh, traverse off to after they have been outed? Huh? Once they have been shown for what they truly are? He teacheth with his fingers. 
teacheth with his fingers on the computer, writing things against the body of Christ, the Church of the Living God. And when someone, uh, when one of these Jesuits, coadjutors, infiltrators, teach with their fingers, you know, on the computer, their cell phones, or if they write things such as such like that, frowardness is in his heart. He deviseth mischief continually. He soweth discord. Is that not a wonderful depiction of a Jesuit, especially here on YouTube? Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly. Suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. There is your end that justifies the mean, or the means, excuse me. You sad, wicked Jesuits. You sad, wicked people. And they will use various means, as they're taught to. Like have upward to, without exaggeration, close to 20 YouTube channels. Without exaggeration. They'll come up with channel after channel after channel to go and attack the brethren, to sow discord. Ah, uh, you know, most of the times you want to say to these people, it's like, why don't you get a life? They have a life given to them by their superior, their provincial, their God, the Black Pope. <laughs> their life is to sow discord among the brethren. But <clears throat> go to Acts, Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20, verse, uh, verse 29. Acts chapter 20, verses 29 and verse 30. Excuse me. <clears throat> For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. To draw away disciples after them. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure it does no glory to the Jesuit order when a Jesuit is a sociopath and narcissistic. <laughs> a narcissistic, um, obsessive sociopath <laughs> who's just plain crazy and wicked and very deceitful. But let's look now at some other sources from Jesuits, okay? Reading to you from the Art of War, which I am now under the belief that, yes, this is not really written by Sun Tzu, but uh, probably, more likely, the Jesuits. I am inclined to believe that because, remember, history is written by those who killed the righteous. <clears throat> and need I say anything more? Uh, this is going to be in Chapter 1. Uh, I've read this before, but in light of what uh, I'm speaking to you now about, what it needs to be read again. Okay? This uh, rendition of Sun Tzu's The Art of War, this is in chapter one, um, and these are numbered here. I'm going to be reading 18 through 25, and here, okay? If you can, where is that? Where my, where's my finger? Okay. Where my finger is, Onto right, right there. Okay. Pause that, read it, and get a screenshot of it where my fingers are in that bracket. Okay. All warfare is based on deception. 
Hence, when able to attack, we must seem unable. These lowly, little humble gentlemen, fellow brethren, who are actually Jesuit infiltrators. When using our forces, we must seem inactive. When we are near, we must make the enemy believe we are far away. <laughs> As the one day when I spake to a actual Jesuit provincial, knowing who I was speaking to, and uh, this uh, provincial kind of called off his little um, rabid, um, <laughs> his little rabid, um, Basset hound, <laughs> whatever, um, worked for a while. But when I was talking to this uh, provincial, I knew exactly who he was, and he figured out that I knew that I knew who he was, which was very interesting. But there again, uh, that whole thing was done to um, basically prove a point. And I'm on to you. I've been on to you, uh, to you Mr. Provincial. If you happen to see this and once your little attack rabbit poodle um, gets word of this, you probably will be aware of this. Hi. Like this smile. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to name names. See, I'm not going to do what you want, Jesuits. I'm not going to give you what you want. But I'm going to make the brethren aware of you. So. Uh, when we, when far away, we must make him believe we are near. Okay? But let me read that again. Hence, when able to attack, we must seem unable. When using our forces, we must seem inactive. When we are near, we must make the enemy believe we are far away. When far away, we must make him believe we are near. Hold out baits to entice the enemy. Feign disorder and crush him. See, a tactic like that would be sending insults to get your attention so you will respond to them. That's a manipulation tactic there, brethren. You have to be aware of that. Okay, when you see uh, Jesuit coadjutors or Jesuits themselves... Um, start leaving comments on your YouTube videos or responding to you, okay? Number one, you have to see their channel and when they were created, that channel was created, usually helps. But there again, you have to keep in your mind, hold out baits to entice the enemy. They're dangling the thing to get you to respond. And then they want to draw you onto irritation, which we're going to look at here very quickly, so that when you lose your cool, they'll use it against you. That's why you give these guys no time of day, brethren. That's why you don't do it. They email you, <laughs> who's uh, a little late on the offensive emails. <laughs> Be careful. Taking screenshots now. So you know. <laughs> oh, you poor, vain, disgusting Jesuit. I hope you get saved. But they hold out these little things for you. To entice you. To bring you down to their level. To use it against you. You have to be aware of that, brethren. And brethren, <clears throat> I know it's tempting. But stay away from them. Beloved, don't go leaving comments on their channels, okay? Please, don't do that. Don't go leaving comments on their channels. Leave them alone. If you must, make a video about them. But do not name them. Because that's what they want. They want you to name them. Even though <laughs> they'll know whom you're referring to, but see, they want you to name them. To start something. You need to be aware of that. 
Okay, let's continue this. <clears throat> if he is secure at all points, be prepared for him. If he is in superior strength, evade him. If your opponent is of a choleric temper, means getting uh, angry easily, um, seek to irritate him. Pretend to be weak, that he may grow arrogant. Oh, and these, especially these guys on uh, YouTube here, these online Jesuits are really good at that. They'll put out videos using a calm voice and pretending to be very um, chivalric and uh, gentlemanlike. Who themselves are uh, get irritated just like that. Actually, um, some Jesuits are quite easy to get irritated, aren't you? Which is which um, historically, like I've mentioned to you before, a uh, Jesuit who has no rule over his spirit doesn't usually go high up in the order. That's why some uh, Jesuits who cannot control themselves. Oh, they can control themselves here on the camera, of course. But once they're away from that the camera, they get really, really irritated really, really quickly. Um, uh, a Jesuit like that don't go too far. They're at the bottom rung. They're still used of the Jesuit order, yes, to fulfill purposes like these. you got to remember that. Again, brethren, don't give them the time of day. I'm doing this, brethren, to make to remind you especially those of you who are aware of the Jesuits and how they operate. Don't do it. Don't go to their channels and comment, please. For example, you'll never see me comment on everybody's favorite YouTube Jesuit and mine. You'll never see, you'll never see a comment from me on his channel. Or the uh, one fine gentleman in Canada, you will never see me comment on his channel. Never. Never. I ain't gonna do it. I would rather put my hand in a bag of scorpions than to go meddle with those people. You're never gonna see me do it. It's what they want you to do, brethren. Let's continue this. <clears throat> if he is taking his ease, give him no rest. If his forces are united, separate them, causing division. Attack him where he is unprepared. That's why, you know, at a moment unaware is like out of the clear blue, uh, you might get a, a, an offensive or insulting email out of, out of the clear blue skies. Like, what? Right there. Right there. Right there. Attack him where he is unprepared. Appear where you are not expected. These military devices leading to victory must not be divulged beforehand. Talking about the Secreta Monita. Yeah, yeah. And to the um, gentleman who told me that about how he believes that this was actually written by the Jesuits. Hi, love you. But uh, yeah, I agree. I think this was actually written by the Jesuits myself. Because it's way too close of a comparison. What and fits too per perfectly. Now, gotta use my fancy schmancy cell phone here. <clears throat> I'm going to be no, no, no. Beg your pardon. I'm going to be uh, sharing with something, something with you that a dear brother from the. Oh, where are you from? The Netherlands. <laughs> from the Netherlands, that uh, he gave me this wonderful package all just full of stuff it's like oh boy i'm kidding candy shop reading this stuff but i want to i want to share this with you okay this is called about the jesuits um i don't have this on my laptop brother um if you happen to see this this public consumption about the jesuits okay the one that was in that lovely package that you gave me Please link it in the comment section and I will pin it. Okay? Thank you. This is a PDF called Public Consumption About the Jesuits. In addition to Freemasonry, European secret societies had a second organizational model 
the Jesuit order, or rather, the image constructed by its numerous opponents. Right from the beginning, right from the beginning in 1540, the Jesuits caused suspicion even among core, religion, core religionists <clears throat> and were accused of hypocrisy, fanaticism, and ambition. As missionary soldiers of the Pope, they became a symbol of the super, su super, uh, what is that? I can't see that. Supranational pretensions, pretensions of the Catholic Church. And since some of them had at one time defended tyrannicide, the violent death of any prince was invariably laid at their feet. The history of the Monita Secreta Maria, Maria Marios, the Secreta Monita, the secret instructions of the Jesuits, which I have the link on my channel, which this is referencing, the development of their reputation. A falsification first published in Krakow in 1640 and endlessly repent, repent, reprinted even today. They call it fake. But when you read the Secreta Monita and see through history, that's exactly their game plan. The Secreta Monita is not fake. That is exactly what the Jesuits do. To the T. To the T. It's exactly what they do. And it is said in the Secreta Monita, if they were ever found out that they were to deny them, just like what we just heard out of the art of war, supposedly so-called done by Sun Tzu. See how they operate? Let's continue this. Okay, the pamphlet was presented as the revelation of the secret instructions of the order known to known only as known only to its leaders. A few new versions that appear later in the century focused on how the Jesuits consciously and systematically strove for world domination. In this and other ways, they were increasingly depicted as a secret society with distinctly modern traits and one that was moreover exceedingly successful even to the point where it became a source of inspiration for its enemies. The Monita played a role when the Societas Jesu was forbidden in Portugal in 1759. In less than a decade, France, Spain, Naples, and Parma, Parma followed suit. And in 1773, Pope Clement XIV disbanded the order. Yet among its opponents, initial joy was soon replaced by the fear that it was super, super, surreptitiously sur regrouping, making something that had been partly secret entirely invisible. In the German-speaking lands, voices were raised to suggest that the Jesuits were behind the organization of secret societies fighting Protestantism and the Enlightenment. And soon they were, come on, work with me, and soon they were said to have infiltrated the lodges and conquered Freemasons, Freemasonry from the inside. And that's exactly what they have done. Even Manly Palmer Hall confesses to that, who himself was a 33rd degree Freemason, okay? Even Manly Palmer Hall says that, okay? Let's continue this. This drew the attention of Count Marabou, 1749 on to 1791, the future president of the French National Assembly and himself a Mason, who discussed the German secret societies after a visit to Prussia in 1786-1787. He compared the Jesuits to the already suppressed Order of the Illuminati, which was founded by um, Weissop, 
who himself a Jesuit. <laughs> Weisop, uh, I forget his first name. Was it Stephen or Adam Weisop? I can't remember. But the founder of the Illuminati, Weisop, was a Jesuit. <laughs> Wake up, people, okay? <clears throat> so, stressing their value as an example, and in this, he not only followed in the footsteps of the first Illuminatus, but at the same time prefigured many a 19th century conspirator. Read also Marabou's report, and then it gives a bunch of links here, or something at the bottom here. And right here, and uh, Brother Matthew Hoon, if you see this, this particular public consumption about the Jesuits, I don't have it downloaded on my computer. I'm still going through a lot of what you sent me. Love you. Please link it in the uh, description box because this diagram here is really good. Um, uh, oh, hold on, brethren. Let me let me see if I can do this. Okay, let me see. Tilt it. Come on. There we go. There we go. Okay. All right. Let me see. All right. I'm going to show you this off my fancy schmancy cell phone. Um, if you can. Okay. Can you can you see that? Take a uh, take a screenshot of that, okay? Take a screenshot of that, and uh, you know, get a photo co a copy of it. Okay, you see that? Okay. <clears throat> it says Jesuit order, and then right under it, Freemasonry. Scottish Rite, York Rite, Knights of Columbus, Knights of the Ku Klux Klan, Knights Templar. Order of the Eastern Star, the female version of the Masons, which I have a book on the Eastern Star that came from a daughter. I got it at a garage sale for a quarter. This lady's daughter was the daughter of one of the Eastern Star. Benai Barith, Opus Dei, Prince of Hall. Benai Barith. They give out awards, and many Jewish people have received rewards from the B'nai B'rith, okay? Fruits of Islam, Order of Malta, Ismailis, yes, Fatima, Fatima, Fatimites, those who are pro, uh, for Semiramis, Miracle, and Fatima, I guess. Banking. Indra, industry, military, Karmathite, Bruces, Assassins, Chase Manhattan Bank. There are two Chase Manhattan Banks here in Illinois, or Chase Banks. They're, they're connected, okay? Um, those of you, my countrymen, you're involved with Chase Bank, you're banking with the Jesuits. International intelligence in agents, agencies. The KJB and, of course, the Catholics in action, the CIA. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, here, 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 here that is again. Take a good look at, it. look at it. Pause it, get a screenshot of it. Do it. And copy it. Brother Matthew, please put this in the, the comment section, please. Okay? All right. But now, let's read something from the Black Pope. Now, Jesuits are very intelligent. Um, very crafty, very deceptive, uh, critical thinkers. <laughs> One of 20. <laughs> but um, we have to remember, they are ak cadaver. They are a lifeless sword in the hand of their superior. Okay, that's why the captain of the Titanic, that Edward Smith guy, purposely drove the Titanic into an iceberg. 
I'm referring about the sinking of the Titanic. And I'll tell you, when I first heard that, at the very first, I scoffed at it. It's like, come on, the Jesuits sank the Titanic. Uh, when you look at who was aboard the Titanic, those who were against the Federal Reserve Bank, okay? And just so happens, those major uh, opponents of the Federal Reserve happened to be on the RMS Titanic and just happened to hit a, an iceberg and go down. And then just happened after that, the Federal Reserve Bank was instituted. How could a Jesuit willingly go down on a ship? I'm reading to you from the Black Pope, the chapter called The Foundation of the Order of the Jesuit. Brother Jeff, uh, you got highlighters, brother? Check this out. This is going to be on page 42 of the Black Pope. Uh, where my fingers are, I'm going to be reading this bracket, okay? Where my fingers are, okay? You see that? This bracket, okay? Pause it, read it, get a screenshot of it, okay? Okay? You see that? The Black Pope, the foundation of the Order of the Jesuits, page 42. There are some remarkable points in this remarkable document. First, we find the following direction. He, the Jesuit, should always have God before his eyes. And more correctly, the aim of our society and our rule, which is the sole way to God. This is going to be uh, tied up very nicely at the end of this paragraph, so let's continue. This sentence is so carefully framed this sentence so carefully framed is the keynote to the whole system of the Jesuit. It is self-evident that no mere man could come forward and demand on his own re responsibility the abject and absolute obedience which Ignatius exacted from his disciples. It is because Ignatius claimed to represent God, not as a mere figure of speech, but literally and actually, that he claimed to be obeyed as God. Right there. That's why Edward Smith could go down on the Titanic. That's why these Jesuits who attack you and all say the same thing, okay, and all have the same script, the Secreto Monita, okay? That's why they do these things. Because following the example of their creator, Ignatius, it is because Ignatius claimed to represent God, not as a mere figure of speech, but literally and actually, that he claimed to be obeyed as God. What do they call the white pope? Blasphemously the Holy Father, right? And Sosa, that terrifying man? See, these Jesuits, brethren, especially here on YouTube, they go to the provincial, the one who's leading their little um, uh, organized uh, unit there. I forget what they call it in the CIA book. Uh, organized prop uh, armed propaganda, uh, propaganda units. That's what they're called, okay? But there's a provincial over, that, over them. These Jesuits do not think for themselves. Even though they use their minds, they do not think for themselves. They are following orders. Okay, by a provincial. And that provincial then, okay, that provincial then goes to their provincial, which goes to their provincial, which goes to the head of the Jesuit order, Sosa, who then, uh, Sosa is the most powerful man on earth. He is the true Pope on earth. Francis is the puppet boy. Put there to make Catholicism look abhorrent onto the pre Vatican II Roman Catholic. Okay? You have to understand that. 
okay? You have to understand this in order for us to, um, to kind of get a grasp on what we're dealing with, okay? Yeah, of course we get that through the scriptures. Of course we do. I'm not saying anything like that, no. But it is helpful to know your enemy. It is very helpful to know your enemy and the tactics that they employ, okay? We have to remember that, brethren. There is no such a thing as coincidence. Everything, especially nowadays, can in one in one way or another be traced back to the Jesuits, the Vatican. Comprende? Now let's continue this. No other claim would have supported his exactions, and that claim once admitted, there could be no limit to the demands on the obedience of the disciple, like going down on a sinking ship willfully. When once it is believed that divine authority, when once it is believed that divine authority and the claim is nothing short of a claim to divine authority is bestowed on an, any individual, that individual takes the place of God and becomes the God of the person who admits the claim, the vicar of Christ, the Pope. That's why these Jesuits are so rabid, so unrelenting, brethren. Their God is not our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. It is Satan. And who is Satan using? Who is his army? Who? What is his church? The Vatican the Roman Catholic Church, and his army is the Jesuits. There are many of you, my brothers, and even sisters, that have been attacked by real-life, actual Jesuits. Hi, I have too. They use their minds to deceive, but remember, these Jesuits are following orders. They can think for themselves to deceive, but they can't think for themselves on how to operate. Someone else does that for them. <laughs> yeah, thinking critically, right. Yeah. You can't even think for yourself. You sad Jesuits. No wonder it's... Like virtually, no wonder it takes a miracle of grace from our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, that you might come and be saved. Only a miracle of grace from the Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, can save you. Because your conscience is seared as a hot iron. All seriousness, I really do pity you. I do. I do pity you. All you Jesuits, I do pity you. Because once you kill me, my family, whatever, that's all you can do. That's all you can do. Oh, go ahead and try to smear my name. Go ahead. The Lord knows. The Lord knows. And guess what, Jesuit? I know who you are. And I know what you are. So do a lot of the brethren and sisters. And Church of the Living God, fellow Church of the Living God, if you make light of the Jesuit, especially in these times, you need to check yourself. You understand? Huh? Look, look at me. You need to check yourself if you make light of the Jesuits. You really do. You need to examine yourself. Okay? Let's continue in this. It is certainly difficult to believe how any human being gifted with ordinary common sense... <laughs> 
could think that a fellow mortal like himself could possess such power. But we have, but we have to do with facts and not with conjectures. It is a fact that thousands have believed and do believe that a mortal like themselves has such power and exercises it by divine right. It is quite clear that there are many circumstances in human life in which we may have a difficulty in deciding which of two courses is the better or most pleasing to God. Right here. But the Jesuit has no such difficulty. He has no choice. For his superior takes the place of God and decides for him. You sad, sad creature, you. You sad, sad creature, you. You sad thing. I do pity you. All you Jesuits, I do pity you. I do. To imagine. Our Lord Jesus Christ, our God, our Father, has given us free will. But you, Jesuit, you don't have free will. Because it's been taken out of you. The spiritual exercises and other various means. You sad sad creature you get your licks in now go ahead that's all you're gonna get you sad creatures you sad sad creatures hence also the demand which is made on the Jesuit for absolute and unmasking obedience in the smallest as well as in the most important matter And finally, brethren, um, I'm going to share with you this from the world's last chance, uh, dot com. I might have this link on my laptop here. If I do, I'll put it in the description box. Uh, so, but check this out. I'm going to be reading a quote from you. Uh, to you from this by a G.B. Nicoloni, Nicol Nicoloni, ec Italian ex-Catholic in 1854, published the finest Italian history of the Jesuit in existence. Uh, even Eric John Phelps makes reference to this. Quote, Take the Jesuit for what he ought or appear to be and you commit the greatest of blunders. Draw the character after what the Jesuit seems to be in London. You will not rec recognize your portrait in the Jesuit of Rome. The Jesuit is the man of circumstances, despotic in Spain, constitutional in England, republican in Paraguay, bigot in Rome, idolater in India, he shall assume and act out in his own person with admirable flexibility. <laughs> uh, yes, you vain sociopathic. <laughs> yes, yes, I am thinking about you. Ah. <laughs> uh. All those different features by which men are usually to be distinguished from each other. He will accompany the gay women of the world to the theater and will share in the excesses of the debauchee. With solemn countenance, he will take his place by the side of the religious man at church 
and he will revel in the tavern with the glutton and the sot. He dresses in all the garbs, speaks all languages, knows all customs, his presence everywhere throughout, nowhere recognized, though nowhere recognized. Let me read that again. Is present everywhere, though nowhere recognized. And all this, it should seem, O oh, monstrous blasphemy, for the greater glory of God, ad majorum de glorium. The members of the society are divided into four classes. The professed, coadjutors, scholars, and novices. There is also a secret fifth class known only to the general and a few faithful Jesuits, which perhaps more than any other contributes to the dreaded and mysterious power of the order. Oh, excuse me. It is composed of laymen of all ranks, from the minister to the humble shoeboy. These are a Affiliated to the society, but not bound by any vows. They are persons who will make themselves useful. They act as the spies of the order. Remember that, brethren. They act as spies of the order. Remember that. And serve, often unwittingly, as the tools and accomplices in dark and mysterious crimes. The Jesuit, Father Francis Palico, candidly confesses that the many illustrious friends of the society remain occult and obliged to be silent. There is no record in history of any occasion uh, association, excuse me. There is no record in history of any association whose organization has stood for 300 years unchanged and unaltered by all the assaults of men and time, and which has exercised such an immense influence over the de destinies of mankind. The ends justify the means is his favorite maxim. And I have a video addressing that maxim. And his only end, as we have shewed, is the order. And it is bidding, and it's bidding the Jesuit is ready to commit any crime whatsoever. There is no level too low, too depraved that the Jesuit will not stoop to. Like attacking one's wife, attacking one's children. There's no level of the depravity of these devils. And see, those who are coadjutors will say, the, the Jesuits don't bother with the lower rank of people. Spoken like a true provincial that you are. Yeah. And it says here, the immense wealth of the Jesuits has been bequeathed to them by wills made at the last hour, which is again presented to you within the Secreta Monita, which is one of their tactics. Brethren, with uh, the catching away coming very quickly and the second wave on the horizon, <laughs> um, don't for one second lightly esteem the threat of the Jesuit. We have nothing to fear of the ch as the Church of the Living God, but you have to keep these people in mind, especially right now. This close, this soon to the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. The amplifiers being revved up. 
And isn't it funny that those who you thought were brethren are starting to turn rapidly and in succession? Don't forget this, brethren. Don't forget this. Keep this in your mind. We're at such a time now that things are going, uh, especially outside there in the world, um, things are getting so low. And what's going to make it better? Get the vaccine. What's going to make it better? Oh, a digital currency. What happened to all these weirdos who believed that the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, was perfect and errant? Given by inspiration, word of God. What happened to all those guys? Oh, I'm still here. <laughs> On a serious note, um, everybody's favorite YouTube Jesuit has cancer. And I don't wish that upon that man. I really don't. I really don't. I would hope that that man would truly get saved. And could you imagine, brethren, what would happen if he did and uh, turned against his order? Whew. I don't think he would make it that long, but wow. I would be really interested to hear what he would reveal if he ever turned on his order. <laughs> uh, anyway, brethren, I had to share this with you today. Um, I love you. I'm praying for you. Keep each, keep each other in prayer. Pray for your brethren in other nations, like Australia. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah, the vaccine isn't mandatory over there, but if you don't take it, you're going to lose government aid. You're going to lose this. You're going to lose that. You're going to lose this. You don't have to take it, but we're going to make your life impossible for you if you don't. I've talked to you many times about the nation of Australia. And I have done that because, number one, a brother kind of, you know, hey, and praise the Lord for you, Brother Justin. But um, the example that is happening right now in Australia is coming here to America. And if it isn't already happening in your nation, um, it will be coming to your nation. That's why we need to pray for the Church of the Living God, the Body of Christ uh, in Australia and in your nation as well. Okay? Any chance the Lord gives you to expose these monsters to Jesuits, do it. Do it. And the Lord bless you. Church of the Living God. I love you. I'm praying for many of you. I bless you. Pray for you. May you be blessed. Excuse me. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Bye-bye.